we're now ready to do some DC circuit analysis on our MOSFET circuits. So let's start by considering this common source circuit shown below. And so we can note that this is a common source circuit because our source terminal, which is the one with the arrow coming out of it, is connected to our ground. So in this circuit, we notice we have some power supply BDD at the top. We have some drain resistance RD. We have R1 and R2 resistors, similar to our voltage divider biasing that we saw for our BJTs. And then of course we have our MOSFET here with our relevant currents and voltages labeled. So we have our drain current coming in the top, we have our drain to source voltage, and we have our gate to source voltage. An important thing to note as we're doing DC analysis here, and we've stated this earlier, is that we have zero current coming into our gate terminal. And so this is because of course we have an oxide at our gate and ideally we have no current coming in there. And so in many ways that's going to make our analysis for these circuits easier than what we had to do for our BJTs. So for this particular transistor, we're given that the threshold voltage is one volt. We have a conduction parameter of 0.1 milliamps per volt squared. And we want to find a few things. We want to find our drain current. We want to find the drain to source voltage and we want to find the power dissipated in the transistor. And so a quick note before we get into our calculations is note that for these parameters, I'm using an uppercase parameter and uppercase subscripts. And that's because we're only dealing with DC values right now. So that same parameter notation we used when we were talking about BJTs and diodes is still going to be relevant here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into our analysis then. So we're interested in our ID and our VDS. And in order to get either of those, we need to know the state of the transistor. So in order to do that, we want to see what our gate voltage is relative to our source. In other words, we're interested in our VGS, so this voltage right here. In this particular configuration, we can note that that VGS voltage is the same as this voltage across our resistor R2. So we can call this VR2, and we can come down here and note that in this case, our VGS is equal to VR2, because our well because of the connection in the circuit and then we can actually simplify a little further or not simplify but we can solve for that just using simple voltage division on this part of the circuit because we do have zero current going into that gate so let's do voltage division we can say vgs which is equal to vr2 is going to be that input vdd which was 5 volts times our r2 which was 20k ohms divided by R1 plus R2, which is 30K plus 20K. So 30K plus 20K. And so that's going to give us a value of two volts. So what we can see then is we can compare that to our threshold voltage of one. So we can say in this case, our VGS is greater than our threshold voltage VTN, which means our device is not cut off. So we're not operating in the cutoff region, which is good because that wouldn't be very interesting in terms of our analysis. Another thing that we can note even before we calculated that VTS is the fact that we have an NMOS transistor with a positive VTN. That's telling us that we have an enhancement mode device. In other words, it's normally off and we're going to have to apply some gate voltage greater than one volt in order to turn this on. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is assume an operating mode. So it's not immediately obvious whether this is going to be saturation or non-saturation. And so there are sort of a set of rules or step-by-step -step process that we can do when, when going through this DC analysis. And so for details on that, you can look on page 155 in the textbook. So this is our step-by-step -step process. And so what the textbook recommends that you do is to start out by assuming, sat assuming saturation. And so the reason for that is the equations in saturation are a little bit easier to deal with. We don't have to deal with a quadratic equation like we would for our non-saturation region. And after we work through and calculate these things, we're basically going to check our assumption. So let's say, sort of summarizing what's on page 155, we're going to assume saturation. In this case, we're able to easily determine it's not cut off. Um, but maybe we didn't know that, maybe our circuit was a little more complicated. So we start by assuming saturation. We can then calculate our values. 
And then once we have those, we're gonna go back and we're going to check our assumptions. And so if we see our drain current is less than zero, then we're probably going to be operating in the cutoff region. And if we see that our VDS is less than our VDS sat, then we're probably going to be operating in the non-saturation region. So again, similar sort of approach that we had with our BJTs. So in this case, let's start by assuming we're in saturation. And so what that means is we use our drain current equation for the saturation region. So we can say that our ID is equal to KN times VGS minus VTN, that quantity squared. So plugging in our known values. So remember our KN, our conduction parameter was given as 0.1 milliamps per volt squared. We just found our VGS was two volts and our VTN is given as one volt, so we square that. And so we can see then our units, we're gonna have the volts squared here, canceling out with the volts squared in the denominator of K sub N, and we're gonna be left with 0.1 milliamps for our ID. So as we expect, our ID is not less than zero, so we're not in cutoff, but again, we sort of already determined that up here. So the next thing we wanna do is check to see if our VDS is less than VDS sat. And so conveniently, we were also asked to find our VDS in this problem. So how do we find our VDS now that we know ID, or at least we think we know ID, we still need to verify our operation mode. Well, we need to go back to our circuit. And so we can see if we do a KVL loop on this side right here, we can see our five volts is just the voltage across this resistor RD plus our VDS. And now that we know our current ID, we can easily find the voltage drop across RD. So let's come down here and write that KVL equation. So KVL on our drain source loop, we can say our VDS is equal to our VDD minus ID RD. So we were given five volts for VDD. We just calculated our drain current to be 0.1 milliamp and our drain resistor is 20K ohms. So if we plug all of that in, we get three volts for our drain to source uh, voltage. But now we need to verify this. So the way we verify that, remember, is we need to calculate that VDS value and see what side we fall on with our operating point of VDS. So remember our VDS sat can be calculated from our, our gate to source voltage as well as our threshold voltage. So it's equal to V gate to source minus VTN for an NMOS transistor. And using our values of two volts and one volt respectively, we get VDS sat of one volt. So of course, comparing these values, we can see that in this case, our three is going to be greater than our VDS sat. So we, are, we checked out our initial assumption. And so we are in saturation. So we are in our saturation mode. And so that means our equations up here were appropriate and our ID is actually 0.1 milliamp and our VDS is actually three volts. Uh, again, if that is, if our assumption was not correct, we would see one of these two things happening. If we were in the non-saturation mode, we would have to go back and use a different equation for our ID, but we could use the same process of KVL to find our VDS once our ID is known. The last thing that we wanted to find was the power in the transistor. And again, noting that we have no current in the gate, we can just say that our power is based on the drain current and the VDS voltage. So no current in our gate terminal means the power in our transistor for MOSFET is just going to be ID times VDS. And we made a similar assumption for, B for BJTs, but here that's just going to be a little more accurate. And so in this case, we had our 0.1 milliamp and our three volts for our VDS, which gives us 0.3 milliwatts. So a relatively simple calculation to find our power. So a couple other things I wanna point out in the text that we're not going to have time to get to, uh, at least at the time of recording this video, other videos might be added later. But if you wanna see a similar example for a PMOS circuit, so remember, same basic ideas, some of the equations are just adjusted a little bit. Uh, you can look on pages 148 to 150, 
And that's going to be a similar example for a PMOS circuit. The one other thing I want to mention can be found on page 152 in the textbook, and that is that we can add a source resistor. So we can add RS, and what that's going to do is stabilize our Q point. So we've not talked about Q points uh, officially yet for MOSFETs, but the same basic idea as we had for our BJTs. This is going to be our operating DC point. And of course that's important because it's going to set our operating mode as we go to do other things with this transistor. So this adding of RS, of course that would be added on our source terminal, so we would add that here. And that's of course very similar, uh, analogous to adding our emitter resistor like we did for our BJT. So the analysis is very similar to that, is why we're not gonna go through that. But again, if you wanna see more details, you can check out page 152 in the textbook.